Pete, well, obviously here in New Zealand, um, any news about the Memphis Grizzlies, we follow with much interest because of our own Stephen Adams being there. Um, but, you know, these stories about Ja Moran are just so disturbing. Uh, he's been stood down. Give us the very latest on, on where he is at right now. Well, uh, our understanding is we know that he's going to be away from the team for at least two games, one of which was uh, uh, on Sunday against the Los Angeles Clippers. Uh, and Ja has stated that he's going to take some time away from the team to to, to kind of get himself together. Uh, he, he quoted a stress uh, as being one of uh, one of the issues for him that he needs to be better about dealing with it. And, uh, you know, as far as exactly what those steps are going to be, I don't know. Um, I'm sure there have been conversations between the Grizzlies and Ja uh, about what he needs to do. And in talking with Taylor Jenkins last night before the game, he said that Ja, you know, has to take responsibility for his choices, good and bad. Uh, and the Grizzlies as a as an organization will hold him responsible to make sure that uh, he takes the necessary steps that that he can move forward in a in a positive fashion so what exactly that looks like where exactly he is and how he's going to go about this uh, those those are all private conversations that uh, that that I really can't shed any light on but uh, you know clearly the Grizzlies are and and Ja have to be very serious about getting himself right and whatever issues he's dealing with, whether it's stress or, or whatever it is, uh, they they want to make sure that he gets this uh, addressed in a positive way. Is, is, is anyone talking about this supposed crew of wannabe gangsters that he hangs around with? Because look, looking at it from as far away as we are, there's a certain patheticness to it. You know, you've got a guy that's worth hundreds of millions of dollars who's got a life that, you know, everyone thinks, my God, I wish I was you. And you're waving a handgun around in nightclubs and you're getting into fights and you're wielding a gun. I mean, what? I, I, I mean, it's just difficult for us here in New Zealand where we don't we don't have this proliferation of guns to even think, why the hell would a guy like that get involved in stuff like this? Yeah, that's a it's a very good question. And one of the challenges and I've been around the NBA for 30 years, one of the challenges for players is that. Uh, who do you surround yourself with? Um, you know, I, I knew Zach Randolph when he was drafted by the Portland Trailblazers, and uh, he had some some folks around him that uh, that were not good influences on him. And and through the years, he was able to to figure out who uh, should be in his inner circle and who should not be in his inner circle. And I, I think that Jaws probably at at that point right now where you you know you're just trying to. When, when you are as wealthy and as popular as he is, everybody wants a piece of your time in some way, shape or form uh, and, and maintaining your inner circle and maintaining good people in your inner circle is, is a challenge for a lot of professional athletes. And um, it, it's something Ja is definitely going to have to address. I think, you know, the people with whom he associates, he's going to have to be very, very careful uh, about who he allows into his inner circle and, and their behavior as well. Um, look, it's it's and this isn't new, is it? We see a lot of you know a lot of it around the the NFL as well. Um, what is the NBA's response to this? How seriously do they take it? Because this is not just a guy getting into a fight or anything. This is a guy waving a, a loaded gun, and with what the you know the horror that happens in your country with the massacres that take place and the the you know the in the in the general anti reaction about gun crime. I should imagine that they will be looking at this and thinking we've got to take some action here ourselves. Well, the collective bargaining agreement, which covers all players, indicates that players may not possess firearms uh, when they are on league business, i.e. traveling on the road to a game. Um, that is a, a, you know, potentially the league is looking at it. But that's potentially a violation of the collective bargaining agreement. And so uh, there would be penalties in place for that. It's already been set out in, in the collective bargaining agreement that he may not have that. Now, Adrian Wojnarowski of ESPN reporting uh, that the, the local authorities in Colorado are investigating because, uh, you know, the gun laws in, in the United States vary from state to state. And so the question is on the table, did, did Ja break any Colorado laws uh, with, with what happened? So uh, there are some very, yeah, the, the, the NBA takes the whole situation of, of gun possession by players very, very, very seriously. And uh, I, I believe that NBA players are required if they own firearms that uh, they are to notify the league before the season uh, that, yes, I do possess firearms and, and, you know, the documentation is this, that and the other. Um, but they're not allowed certainly to possess them while they are on league business, i.e. You know, <laughs> go, going to a game or, or being on the road for a game.
Pete Pranick is with us. He's the play-by-play caller for the Memphis Grizzlies on Borley Sports. Pete, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a man in my 50s. Um, I don't know how old you are, but you're probably around about a similar age. You know, how mm-hmm. do you know you've you I, I assume you've got children, uh, you know, as well. And, and I mean, how do you how do you how do you look at this? Do you look at it like a, as a father and go, oh, my God, if that was my son, how would I be reacting to this? It's just it's something that we thank God we just don't deal with here in New Zealand. I mean, we had a guy on the weekend uh, in, in one of our most famous all black rugby players make a throat slit gesture at another player during a game. And the reaction from that, as you can imagine, it's like, oh, my God, you can't do that. I mean, what what the hell are you, what are you right. talking about? You're going to stab this guy. So, I mean, and it has to be taken really seriously. So just as a, as a man, as a father doing your job in that, what's your initial reaction and, you know, when, when a story like this appears? Well, the, the initial reaction, honestly, was was anger because there had been reports about different things that had happened and none of them were corroborated or substantiated. So we we don't know. He said, she said, they said nobody really knows exactly what happened. And and then, you know, all of us. We like John Morant. He's a good person. I've seen him do some amazing and wonderfully generous things, particularly with kids. Um, and then to see that video, uh, I think all of us with the team felt a little betrayed by it because we had uh, we had supported him. Uh, so, yeah, so there there is an element of anger that like, you know, what what, what in the world are you are you thinking? Um, the fact that Ja had indicated and there was a quote from a couple of years ago, he says, sometimes when you feel you're drowning, it's because you're trying to be everybody's anchor. And I, I, I think that it's it's so hard for someone who's 23 years old, who, you know, five years ago was, you know, a struggling, you know, financially, you know, coming from a small town in South Carolina, going to a small school in Murray State. And then all of a sudden now you have this $193 million contract. Nike has given you uh, your own signature shoe. Uh, Powerade, the sports drink, has has made you one one of its spokespeople. You are even Kevin Durant is saying, Hey, this kid is the the face of the NBA going forward. That's a lot for even the most well adjusted person to deal with. And if Ja is having issues with how he processes stress and, and, and other things in his life, um, it's, it, it, it's just exacerbated. I mean, you know, the, the prevalence of mental illness, I don't know how it is in New Zealand, but the prevalence of mental illness and depression, anxiety in the United States is, is, is rather high. And then when you add in all the, you know, and many people who suffer from from some type of, of mental illness do it, do it privately. It, they, and then they're not in the public eye the way John Morant is. And if he's dealing with with stress issues, if he's dealing with emotional issues, whatever it is, uh, you know, you're doing it in the public public eye, which is um, which is very, very difficult to do. I think all of us with the Grizzlies, we, we want what's we we want Ja to get whatever help he needs to heal in whatever way he ne- needs to heal, so that the behavior that we saw on Instagram Live does not recur. Pete, just a couple more questions. We thank you so much for your time, mate, here on the platform in New Zealand. I mean, a couple of names: Johnny Football threw his life, his career away down the toilet. Plaxico catches a, a winning touchdown in a Super Bowl, then goes and shoots his foot off in a nightclub. I mean, there's been plenty of examples, haven't there? I mean, the Daryl Strawberries are so far. I mean, we know there's been so many. I, I suppose you can't draw parallels with it. My question, though, is when he comes back and plays on the court, I mean, are you going to get a whole lot of you know opposition fans every time he gets the ball yelling, shoot, shoot? I mean, I can just see that kind of stuff happening, you know? Uh, yeah. I mean, that's, you know, unfortunately, that's, that's the way, you know, if there's a the reason that, Fan is short for fanatic, mm. um, and I, yeah, there, there, there's, there's certainly that's that's going to be a, a, a part of it, unfortunately, um, you know. But again, Jaw has to take responsibility for his actions, you know. He he did it, and with the visual evidence is there for everybody to see, and uh, so that's that's going to have to be part of it, and he's going to have to deal with. Some things, the way I'm sure people cat called Tiger Woods after yeah, yeah. Uh, his his indiscretion. So uh, that that's that's going to be part of it. And uh, and I think what I hope anyway is that by Ja getting help at this point in his life, that he avoids Plaxico Burris and Johnny Manziel territory. That he is going to do this now, and that. Uh, you know, maybe the silver lining of this very unfortunate incident is that it prompts him to get help sooner rather than these incidents is kind of parading on and on and on.
on and things get get to a very bad place. Can I just ask one selfish question at the end of this? Such a glorious team to watch. As I said right at the beginning with Stephen Adams playing, I mean, a lot of attention on the Grizzlies here. I love Memphis as a city. I've been there a couple of times. It's a, it's a fantastic, historic city as well. This team is, is just young. It's full of vigour. It's full of vim. It's a, it's a bright light in the NBA I mean, you know, how does this influence and how is it going to influence the end of the season coming in for, what, less than 20 games in the playoffs? And that I know it's a selfish question, and but as sports fans, I mean, you know, we're, we we also think about this, don't we? And I'm sure you do. Yeah, I mean, you're there, there's a big question mark hanging over this team because you don't know when he's going to come back. How long will this process take uh, where he can get some resolution in his, his personal life? And and so, yeah, we we approach this whole situation with this big question mark, and we're hoping that one question mark gets resolved, if not in the next game against the Lakers, maybe a game after that, uh, because Stephen Adams, his absence, particularly against the Clippers, was – was profound. Uh, the Grizzlies just could, I mean, two offensive rebounds for one of the best offensive rebounding teams in the league is, is unheard of. And, and certainly the Grizzlies need Steven Adams back. There is, you know, some looking at the standings and what does this mean for the team long term? But right now, everybody is most concerned with jaw getting the help that he needs to get himself to a, a good place where, again, these incidents, these situations uh, become a thing of the past and, and not something in his future. So, yeah, we're, we're I, I, you know, and you are of two minds here because you are looking at the games, you are looking at the results, you are looking at the playoffs looming. But on the other hand, we're, we're talking about somebody's life here uh, and his, his livelihood and his mental health and, and everything, and, and, and that ultimately is is the most important thing for John Moran is for himself to get right it's more important that he gets right than he returns too quickly and you know just so the Grizzlies can win some games I think that's that's the perspective that everybody's trying to have and uh, thank you for the kind words about Memphis I've, I've been to New Zealand um, I visited Christchurch and, and some other areas uh, in New Zealand and I hope 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 I can come back someday